All right, guys, I think I'm going to make a series of videos um, again uh, with this SBE console, too. Um, this one's getting a uh, DDS VFO from uh, Troy Radio, and I already got it all together, all mocked up, and everything is um, working good, and code is working. Um, everything is working, so now it's just a matter of uh, getting this screen mounted in a... Uh, location that makes sense um which is kind of tough to do on this radio here because there's not a lot of real estate here where i could um mount this um without losing something so i cut this little uh template here which is the size of uh, the screen and uh, i've been kind of messing around with this area here um, once I get this, uh, encoder out of here, this, uh, knob, I was thinking of possibly putting this here and then putting the, uh, encoder up above it. But the problem is this, this, um, this meter on the inside kind of comes down a little bit farther like this, you know? something like that so it's kind of tough getting it in there and I've thought about this thought about it thought about it um, and uh, I think I have a solution and I think it's really gonna look um, great this way um, I have a POTS radio coming for this uh, because this these holes here you see this was for a channel mod uh, somebody had done they actually did a really nice job um, with the uh, mod as far as like wiring um, but then they go and do a bonehead move and mount the switches on the front here um, I would have preferred uh, to see them like maybe on the side somewhere or I don't know maybe on the bottom you know where you can kind of like usually you see them on the bottom here somewhere because this this does have a, the bottom plate of this does have standoff you guys can see it there you know, which would have been enough for a switch. And you can kind of just reach under there and, and, you know, do your switches or whatever. But whatever. They decided to go down this road. Uh, we went down the road of getting a POTS radio. So that's the plan. Uh, that should be in soon. Uh, so what I was thinking as far as um, getting the display in, I was thinking of putting it in the um, meter down, well, it's not a meter, it's uh, on on the air uh, light, um, but it's basically the same size as a meter. So the plan was, and I think this is really the only way to do it, is to move this meter into this spot, take this out, which I already, I already popped this out. going on here I just had this okay here we go so yeah you can normally see it says on the air what I was thinking of doing was taking this and um, cutting the back of this and mounting the screen on the back side of this um, this empty um, meter case and then uh, blacking out the rest um, so that way you don't actually see um, behind there uh, maybe with some like um, I don't know maybe uh, a piece of like black plastic or something you know um, but that's the plan anyway and then yeah move this over there and then have the encoder right right there um, so the plan is to either black out the whole switch here which I think is the best way to go sand this down get rid of these numbers because uh, it's not it's no longer gonna make sense with the encoder um, and uh, just have like one big um, you know uh, knob so imagine imagine that just blacked out because what that's gonna do too is that's gonna cover up uh, the light that would normally shine through for the channel um, 
and obviously I'll take the, the bulb out of there so it's not going to be shining through. But that's the plan, uh, and I think that's the best way to do this. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, putting the kit together wasn't um, that difficult at all. Um, you just kind of go on the website, you get... Because the silk screening on the, uh, on the actual um, Adreno board is kind of... Uh, like blurry, uh, looks like the silk screening didn't come out right. But if you go on um, the website ddsvfo.com, you have like a, a schematic of um, you know all the um, the locations of where you need to solder the wires and what circuits, uh, you know, and what boards they go to, etc. So uh, yeah, it wasn't. Um, it was pretty easy actually. Um, the toughest part I think is going to be. Um, not even, it's not even that tough, but um, it's going to be mounting um, the screen in a, uh, in a in a good location that makes sense. So, yeah, that's um, that's the plan for this radio here. And um, I'm kind of happy that somebody finally wanted to uh, do a DDS VFO um, because I've been um, kind of itching to do one. Uh, so, kind of happy that um, I got the opportunity to do this. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna move this, um, uh, meter into this location, take this on the air, pop it in there, and, uh, mount the screen inside of there, because this will also act as a protector for the, uh, actual screen, uh, so that way it's not, you know, just sticking out of the radio, um, you know, uh, in, so I, I think that this is actually the best uh, the best road to go. So, and uh, in fact, I think it's kind of like the only only way to go, really, um, because of what's behind here. You know, there's there's a there's a couple of brackets back here, and uh, again, the meter is back here. So there's the only other option would have been to been to to put it here, but you're gonna need to do some major, major, major surgery to. Um, get everything to fit and then I'd have to move the encoder down a little bit and then I'd have this huge oblong hole here so um you know and that just it doesn't make sense that would look so ugly um but yeah I think what I'm going to do is um I'm going to cut this open and kind of um uh see how it looks um with the actual screen on uh, make sure that it doesn't look distorted because this actually looks like it's in really great shape. There's no uh, uh, There's some like light scratching on it, but it's there's nothing that would like make it, uh, you know, look ugly or uh, I think deter from the um, From the display um, But I'd have to actually you know test it out. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this um, on the ear um I guess empty meter or whatever case, whatever you want to call this, uh, a pot. And I'm going to see how it actually looks uh, with the screen lit up behind it. And uh, if it looks good, uh, we're going to go down this road. Yeah, we're going to lose the on, on the air, um, you know, a uh, little light coming on. But I think, um, I think that the benefits are going to outweigh losing the meter uh, or whatever you want to call this thing. So let me get this thing apart. I'm going to... Um, put some uh, voltage to the board here and see exactly how um, it's gonna look. All right, stand by. All right, I got the lights turned off here on the uh, workbench to kind of see the, the meter a little bit better. It might look like it's scrolling through, but that's the refresh rate. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, let me try to put this in here without arcing anything out. But it's gonna look something like that um, obviously a little bit more centered but um, yeah that's uh, that's the plan and then the edges you see to the right and the left of the meter uh, of the display sorry um, you know that's going to be covered um, you know with something I don't know what yet but um, you know maybe like a piece of plastic or something you're not going to see the the holes either um, but this is just to give, you know, kind of like an idea of um, what it could possibly look like. And again, it's protected behind um, 
you know the uh the face there the um the the the, the plastic on the um uh, that empty meter there and uh obviously it's going to be moved over to the right side um like we had uh like I had said earlier but this kind of gives an idea um on the display here uh, and I think it looks uh, pretty good um I went with the uh white display uh, all white display I think it looked um looked better than uh, the other options but uh yeah I think um I think that's the way to go uh and like I said it's protected um you know with the with the uh you know with the meter it's uh, with the um the housing itself you know so it's not going to be out you know god forbid somebody spilled something or you know if you want to clean um you know the radio with some i don't know glass cleaner or something like that you know you're not there's no physical contact with the actual screen um because it's my understanding that these screens are a little bit on the fragile side um you know and if somebody does happen to maybe hit something you know it, it does have that protection you know um so guys I, I think this is the way to go with us um so yeah i'm gonna uh progress on here take these knobs off and uh because like i said this uh this front's gonna have to come off of this um and uh yeah just continue on here so this radio is also getting a full service it's getting a recap which i don't know if you guys have ever tried to recap one of these i've had one other one before and they're a pain in the butt um, all the terminals, all the leads on the um, components are uh, bent over, uh, and it's just a pain in the butt uh, to do these. Um, but anyway, it's going to have to get done. But yeah, that looks, uh, I think that looks good. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. So let me continue on here. Uh, I'm going to take this front um, front of this radio off. And, uh, yeah, just move on. All right, so this radio has been challenging, to say the least. Um, as you can see, the front face plate is off of this, and um, it's it's off for a reason. Um, SBE's been known to do their own thing, and uh, this radio is no different. So the plan was to take the whole front of this off and swap in a new front from the pots radio because this one had the channel mods uh switches uh in the front um but when i went to go look for the screws i realized that they were behind they go you know into the radio but they were behind the face plate and behind the speaker grill which is one of the most idiotic things i've ever seen on the bass radio so, uh, yeah, what I had to do was I had to, um, in order to get a, uh, the new front to this, I had to peel off the existing, uh, front face plate. Um, you know, uh, and, and I'm going to end up just keeping this on because I don't want to ruin, um, you know, the speaker grill. Um, so the less I have to do, the better in this case. So I'll just end up, uh, while taking this off wasn't, you know, I didn't have to really use much care um but from the pots radio i'm gonna have to really really you know uh, take my time and uh, i have a really good adhesive uh remover um that should eat away at this glue and uh make removal uh of the face uh, the front face plate easy um because the last thing i want to do is ruin it you know dimpling it or trying to pry it off and you know put a crease in it because it is aluminum so um i'm gonna have to be cautious with with that but yeah this is uh this is the reason why this whole front face plates off um you know uh, it kind of ruins uh my plans but it is what it is and um the other issue i had was well when i removed the the channel selector um i think it was one of those red wires there was uh supplying um voltage to the uh rf gain um which is not a big deal so i just have to kind of swap that over to uh um to get voltage back to that 
and uh yeah that's about it so uh, i think it came out good uh so far um but i have i mounted the unit on the side here uh, another thing that sbe did uh as far as um you know different is uh you'll notice that the um the actual circuit board is uh facing down like in a mobile unit um which in this case i guess is kind of good because it gave me a spot to mount the uh dds vfo and uh yeah so this is all circuits that need to be wired um stuff like clarifier and um you know a few other options uh roger beep and stuff um that need to be wired in um what else oh yeah there's the clock uh the rf generator board that needs to be uh mounted uh as well and um i think uh i think i covered everything with the challenges so far uh but we can kind of turn this on and um oh yeah the other thing i was uh the reason why um i have this wired to the uh power supply is uh because the voltage regulating circuit in this um there's no way to adjust it so the transistor the voltage regulator um it's under this here and um there's no way to adjust uh the voltage so whatever comes out that's what it is so this thing is operating at almost 15 volts and um i'm just not uh i'm not um happy with that as far as powering up a dds vfo with 15 volts uh so i'm gonna have to either try to get this voltage regulator working properly or swap in you know one that is working properly or i might have to put some sort of uh, adjustment on uh that um circuit uh to bring this back down to a uh, a normal 13.8 uh, volts um you know uh power supply um because that's what the DDS VFO requires. I think 15 volts is just going to be way too much for it, for it and uh, I just don't want to risk it. Um, but yeah, again, that's SBE doing things differently than everybody else. But um, let me uh, turn this turn this on with the power supply here, external uh, power supply, and we can kind of see what it looks like. Um, you can see that I swapped meters over. Um, so now the uh, SWR power and signal meter is on that side, and uh, the DDS VFO screen is on this side. And uh, I think you guys are going to like the way it looked, the way this came out. Alright, that's how it looks. I think it looks pretty damn awesome. And uh, yeah, the encoder is already mounted. Yeah, so everything is uh, working. I like the way the encoder uh, feels. I like the, uh, you know, it's nice and smooth. But yeah, it's um, everything's working out. Like I said in the other video, I'll end up pa uh, spray painting this. We're covering it maybe with some sort of vinyl wrap, uh, black. So that way you don't see the numbers because, you know, it's kind of kind of dumb uh, because those numbers don't do anything anymore. Um, but yeah, so that's that's as far as I got so far. Um, I think it's looking great. And I'm still waiting for the parts radio to get here and uh, I can continue on. But I just wanted to give a, uh, a quick update here on, you know, as far as I got. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So um yeah, stay tuned for more videos um, on the uh, on this radio. I'll probably do a couple of more at least, um, and uh, then we'll do like a test. We'll do like an on-air test and uh, see exactly. We'll do, go through all the features and whatnot, and um, yeah, once this thing is back together. All right, stay tuned for the next part. Thanks for watching, guys.